हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल क्वालिटी मैग्निफाइ इंडिया माय सेल दीपक कुमार सामल वेलकम ऑल द व्यूअर्स एंड सब्सक्राइबर्स फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू आर वाचिंग द एपीए 653 सीरीज एंड मेकिंग नोट ऑफ देम ऑलरेडी वी कवर पार्ट 5 ऑफ एपीए 653 एंड टुडे वी विल कवर पार्ट 6 I hope you are sharing those videos with your friends by those they are getting benefited from this videos who are preparing for API 650 570 and 510 exams friends don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell button so that whenever i will upload any new video you will get a notification let's start APA 653 Part 6. From last five parts, we have already covered full person of APA 650 and preliminary person of APA 653. APA 653 Chapter 1, 2, and 3 we have covered, and today we will go for Chapter 4, which is most important. Let's start. Chapter four: Suitability for service. What does it mean by suitability of service? When we put the tank in service, it will some corrosion, erosion, degradation, or distortion will happen to the tank surface. Either it can happen to the roof, the cell, or to the bottom. In order to evaluate what is the person what is the percentage of the degradation or distortion or contamination or corrosion for those areas and whether those areas need an immediate repair last chapter we already read it minor repair major repair alternation reconstruction relocation so all these things is it required so that thing we need to check everything in section 4 and we call it suitability of service we will cover from roof cell and bottom okay here in this section expected some 12 to 15 questions will come out of 12 to 15 around 5 to 7 questions are open book and 7 to 5 questions are closed book so the chance is 50 50 there are many mathematical calculations okay can be expected from section 4 so let's start section 4 suitability of service when the when the result of a tank inspection show that change has occurred from the original physical condition of the tank an evaluation shall be made to determine its suitability for continued use okay very important line when to do the evaluation that is called frequency of inspection okay when to do the evaluation is called frequency of inspection that we will read in examination chapter okay inspection and examinations when i need to do the inspection external inspection ut thickness inspection okay when i have to do that one so that is required as per the inspection intervals so first we will come for the tank roof evaluation when we will do the tank roof evaluation what values we will get and what actions we have to take roof plate corroded to an average thickness of less than 0.09 inch in any 100 in square area of roof plate with any holes through the roof plate shall be repaired i told you many times cell is must cell means must so if in 100 inch square area we found any of the area is less than 0.09 inch 0.09 inch is 2.3 mm okay if it is less than 0.29 inch then a repair must be done okay so this is the rule for roof plates it is a closed book question fixed roofs roof support member uh, members rafters girders 
columns and base shall be inspected for soundness by method of acceptable to the responsible inspector i already told in 650 what is columns if you remember 650 what is the fillet length we use for the column patch plates it patch plate thickness must be 6 mm and the fillet should be 6 mm so that's why we read 650 earlier columns guards raptors guard raptors are horizontally supported guards inclined supported okay columns in the center and uh, roof supporting equally distribution if it is a bigger roof then uh, we have many columns okay and bases shall be inspected for soundness by a method acceptable to responsible inspector so the responsible inspector authorized inspector has to decide by in a suitable manner he has to uh, inspect the roof okay roof is the least uh, important part of a tank whereas bottom plate is the most important part of the tank if you compare with uh, pressure vessel like pressure vessel the sail is more important than any other part similarly for the tank the bottom plate is more important the annular plate is more important annular ring okay similar okay but bottom plate uh, for in tank the bottom plate or annular ring is more important whereas in pressure vessel the sails are more important so here we start with roof roof is least important but if you we'll see in 650 we start with the bottom plate okay bottom plate then sail plate then roof we read it uh, end but in 6 in 653 we start with roof plate first and we have uh, requirement that if it is less than 0.9 inch it will find the average thickness okay where what we call by average thickness let's say this is the roof i took a place okay then i st start measuring with the ut thickness measurement or some types of measurement okay and i find 20 values so i have to make average of 20 values okay all the values i have to add i have to add i have to add and divide by 20 and whatever the value we will get if this value is less than 0.09 inch in a 100 in square okay let's say this circle is 100 in square okay the area then it need to be replaced that's what it is saying so for fixed roof okay distorted such as out of plumb columns if the column is distorted okay so column what i told so if this is the uh, if this is the uh, this is a tank and this is the column okay if the column is distortion is happen in the column okay corroded and damaged members shall be evaluated and repaired or replaced if necessary particular attention must be given to the possibility of severe internal corrosion of pipe uh, columns corrosion may not be evidenced by external visual inspections okay so external visual inspection we cannot find a uh, corrosion we have to do some type of nde non destructive examinations we have to do to find out whether there is any corrosion or not what is the thickness of the material it reduced floating roof floating roof if you remember in aph 650 i have already explained to you what is internal floating roof and what is external floating roof if you didn't know that please do watch aph 650 for getting those uh, difference between internal and external floating roofs so floating roofs what are the inspections uh, it is required areas of roof plate and pontons pontons i have explained there pontons exhibiting cracks or punctures shall be repaired or the affected sections replaced so this is usually open book exams sometimes they ask for the floating roofs what are the requirement for this pontons and uh, roof plates okay if there is a crack whether it need to be repaired or not areas that are pitted shall be evaluated to determine the likelihood of th thorough pitting occurring uh, prior to the next little internal inspection if so the affected area shall be repaired or replaced pitting means not a through hole okay pitting means degradation of some material on uh, a particular area okay roof support systems perimeter sill systems apprentices or as roof uh, rolling uh, ladders anti rotation devices water drain systems and venting systems shall be evaluated for needed repairs and replacement these are not so important okay operation at elevated temperature all re requirements of apa 650 and xm this is already we read in uh, apa 650 shall be considered before changing the service of a tank to operation at temperature above 200 degree f so an xm as we read in apa 650 it is from 200 f to 500 f okay and 
this fa 650 the radius is limited to 200 feet okay height no limit but uh, dia 200 feet that we need to remember there are some multiple questions usually come operation at lower temperature than original design if the operating temperature is changed to a lower temperature than the original design let's say as per fa 650 when the tank was constructed at that time whatever the original design temperature was measured in reality during operation it is less it was done less so what we have to do the, the requirement of the current applicable standard for the lower temperature shall be met so re-evolution of designing should be done and it should be checked that the it is meeting the requirements if it is not then we have to alter to some alternation to the tank actual thickness determination you will get one question 100% from critical length what is critical length we will now read okay actual thickness determination how you will measure the thickness you are telling cell plate you are doing the evaluation okay root plate we are finished now we come for the cell plate cell plate we are doing the evaluation same like a 650 how we do the cell plate evaluation here also cell plate we are doing the evaluation at that time cell plate minimum is 5 mm but here the minimum is 2.5 mm there is a difference so actual th cell plate uh, thickness determination how we will de do it during a 653 for determining the controlling thickness in each cell course when there there are corroded areas of considerable size measured thickness shall be averaged in accordance with the following procedure there is a procedure in figure 4.1 next slide i will show you how to do that okay for each area the authorized inspector shall determine the minimum thickness t2 at any point in the corroded area excluding widely scattered pits minimum thickness t2 t2 is called the minimum thickness how they will do that so they will choose an area and based on that area they have to make five minimum vertical lines we will see in the next slide let's say this area they have find out that they have uh, evaluated that there is some thinning of materials there are pitting marks so what they have to do they have to mark at least minimum five you can make more than five but minimum is five you have to make okay after making a five you have to take the reading in each lines okay in each lines you have to take the readings few readings there is no restriction of the readings you have to, to take all these pipelines readings after taking the pipeline readings you have to take the t minimum t minimum means which is the minimum value what you get what you get from this one okay t minimum t minimum t minimum thickness okay how much minimum thickness and out of this value you have to do average of each lines average means let's say there is four points one two three four whatever the value came you have to add and divide by four and you have to write the values here 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 and here after getting this one the lowest average you have to take the t average okay so by this we can find out the critical length which is called l there is a exam question to find out the critical length critical length means the area in which the uh, which which is more susceptible for corrosion which not corrosion which is more susceptible for damage okay that is called critical length so critical length is calculated in a formula 3.7 root over dt2 but not more than 40 inch this is important sometimes the values are coming more than 40 so you have to consider 40 inch only okay so l is the maximum vertical length in inch in inch this is important don't confuse because there is a feet also d you have to take feet t2 you have to take in inch and l you will get in inch if it is in inch you have to convert it into feet because this is feet inch this is the formula you will get only inch neither it will the formula will be wrong okay so l is the maximum vertical length in inch over which hoop stresses are assumed to average out around local discontinuities so d is the tank diameter in feet and t2 is the least thickness in inch in an area of corrosion exclusion of pits so what will happen in the exam it will be simple questions will come with uh, find out the critical length because you have to go for it is an open book exam it is not a closed book okay so they will give you the tank diameter they will give you the least thickness in inches and you have to find out the critical length which is l is 3.7 root over dt2 
multiply d with the two parts then take the root over and multiply with 3.7 you will find the critical length in any case if you will get the critical length more than 40 inch you have to consider 40 inch only you have to remember it the authorized inspector shall visually or otherwise decide which vertical plane in the area is likely to be most affected by corrosion so the authorized inspector only do it, not the nde nde inspector is for doing non destructive examination only uh, inspector is also called authorized inspector so the authorized inspector shall visually or otherwise decide otherwise means by ut or some manner is to decide which vertical plane in the area is likely to be most affected by corrosion all we are doing to evaluate the cell okay the roof is finished now we are in cell next will come bottom so in cell now you are evaluating which areas are susceptible to damage in future so we are doing possible testings okay first we find the critical area okay critical length we found the critical length so here it is saying in the plane determine the lowest average value it is t1 t1 already i told you how you to do the lowest average value uh, as i told if you take this uh, uh, susceptible area or uh, as it is written here visually or otherwise decide which vertical plane let's say this vertical plane this vertical plane the authorized inspector is identified then we have to put five uh, lines okay after putting the five lines we have to take the t minimum the minimum value and we have to make the lowest average lowest average means y a b c d e all the points wherever you do the testings okay just make the average and may make a final average for each of the line then take the lowest one and you have to make a t average okay so using the list uh, this is this is important uh, at least five equally spaced measurement this is coming one time in the closed book how many uh, equally spaced measurement over uh, length of l you have to do it <coughs> so here the procedure is written okay determine t2 the minimum value okay then calculate the critical length critical length is 3.7 root over of d2 but not more than 40 inch which we did last times then locate l to get the t average then find the l make the critical length area okay this is the critical length area then after getting the critical length area this is the critical length area okay it is saying critical length area so in critical length area this is one value 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 and this is one value and this is one value i have to measure all the value and divide it to get the t average so this is called t average so by this i will find the t average which is also called t1 okay so this is very clear you have to find the critical length okay 3.7 root over d2 if you find the critical length then only you can find the t average in the question they will never ask for the t average they will ask for the critical length t minimum t2 t minimum you have to use d diameter in feet you have to use t2 in inch so multiply make the root over multiply with 3.7 and get the value of critical length in inch if it is less than 40, 40 inch then the answer is whatever it can if it is more than 40 inch then the answer is 40 inch only i hope it is clear okay so next important part the criteria for continued operation is as follows what is the criteria the value of t1 okay t1 is our t average shall be greater than equal to t minimum t minimum means if the cell is let's say uh, we have decided the cell minimum thickness is 2.3 mm okay we have found 2.3 mm the cell thickness is required so what is saying the value of t1 average whatever we get t average here we say na t average the value of t average should uh, cell be greater than or equal to t minimum the value of t average must be more than 2.3 or equal to 2.3 if it is less than 2.3 then it is not acceptable we have to change we have to repair that cell area okay second class what what is that the value t2 shall be greater than or equal to 60 percent of the t minimum t2 is the minimum okay t2 t2 here we have mentioned okay t2 is the less least minimum thickness in entire area the least minimum thickness how much it can it should be 60% of the T minimum. 
okay let's say we found some places it is less but it should not go beyond 60% of the t minimum so these two questions usually they ask in closed book or open book so you have to remember for this one okay this is regarding the cell plate evaluation okay this 4.3.2.2 will read it one or two slides after okay i have added here but we will read it after one or two slides there is one open book questions or closed book questions guarantee come from come from this 4.3.2.2 okay so now this calculation is famous calculation and it is coming in every question or every examinations okay minimum thickness calculation for one tank cell one is for minimum thick another one for hypertest height so these two questions this slide we will read for minimum thick and just uh, rearrange this equation and uh, make bring h here t minimum here you will find hydrotest height h h minimum okay it will become h minimum so there is two things one is for entire cell course and another one any other person of the cell course when we will say entire cell course if you remember 650 that's why i told 650 is more important when i read 650 it is very clear if you read it uh, and uh, uh, watch 650 frequently then it is be very easy for you okay if any of the joint which is coming in not near to the weld okay then we consider it h minus 1 one foot formula do you remember 650 one foot formula please watch please watch 650 if you didn't watch it till now for the one foot formula okay and if it is coming on the weld okay so this is the difference near to weld or, uh, or above the weld and away from the weld that's what we call one foot formula if it is one foot away then we consider for the entire cell course that's what it is saying entire cell course t minimum okay so here this two formula you have to do calculation in your exam okay here in your exam you will get everything i will make it easy i will not go in reading one by one okay in your exam everything will be very easy to find out except s and e s is stress value e is efficiency of the joint okay that is very clear stress value how you have to find out there is two rules one by table or another one if Young's modulus or uh, 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 tensile strength is given, okay. And E, if it is one meter away or two times the thickness of the cell plate away, then E is called one. If it is near to the weld, then there is a table we have to follow. So I will make it simple. Please don't confuse on that one. T minimum for the welded cell thickness. There is two formulas, okay. For one entire cell course, as I explained, the formula is T minimum is 2.6 H minus 1 DG by SE. If any other person, then there is no minus 1. It is only T minimum at 2.6 H DG divided by SE. As I told you, as I told you, everything you will find in your question except S and E sometimes they give s and e but most of the times they try to test you whether you are going to find s or e s or e or not because these two parts are more more important so let's start one by one t minimum okay what is t minimum t minimum is the minimum except i will tell you how, how to find s and e yeah? in the next slide i will show you the table i will show you the calculation how to find s and e this is your short question you will find three to four question and it is very easy to remember and you will to score in the examinations okay so t minimum is the minimum acceptable thickness in inches for each cell course calculated from the above equation however t minimum cell not less than 0.1 inch for any cell course what is 0.1 inch? 2.5 mm. So I have to remember, I have to make you remember. For the roof, how much it came, friends? 0 0.09 inch, 2.3 mm. And for cell, it is 2.5 mm. So you have to remember that is 2.3, and here it is 2.5 mm. But in APA 650, the roof was 5 mm, and the cell plate was 5 mm. Okay? The bottom plate was 6 mm. Okay? Do you remember it? 
if you didn't please watch 650 videos so it will get more clear so d d is the nominal diameter of the tank in feet okay h h is the height from the bottom of the cell course under consideration to the maximum liquid level when evaluating the entire cell course in feet if it is the tank is here okay and the design level is here then you have to calculate this one you should not go to this height if you go up to this height you are wrong okay so that's what it is saying then g is the height specific gravity of the content usually specific gravity they are giving okay what is the specific gravity of water one okay so if it is given water then you have to take the readings g as one okay so now balance is s and e how to find s and e okay s s is the maximum allowable stress in pound per square inch use the sum smaller of 0.8 y y is yield strength if in the question uh, the yield strength is given that means you no need to go for the table you can find it by 0.8 y or 0.429 t t is the maximum tensile strength so by this two way you can find out what is the value of maximum allowable stress clear 40 minimum okay but don't uh, mix this s this uh, allowable stress with this allowable stress this is different okay this allowable stress for t minimum and this is for a hydro test height okay ht okay height of uh, hydro test height so this is different that is different so just read the question very carefully if it is saying t minimum then you have to go for find s if the yield strength and tensile strength is given let's say the yield strength and tensile strength is not given how to find out here table 0.4.1 we have to go in the next slide how we can find s okay one part is over now second part e as i told you the two things we were missing in the question s and e and we have to find out these two things then the question is solved okay there is nothing it is a very easy um, uh, calculations and it is an open book in e the original joint efficiency of the tank used for table 4.2 i will tell you how to find it but there is another one thing also if original e is unknown e is one when evaluating the retirement thickness in a corroded plate if the original e is not known then you have to consider e is one when away from the plate of joint at least or greater than one inch or twice the plate thickness what does it mean when you will take e is equal to one that's what it is saying okay let me explain you this is a tank sorry the drawing is not proper this is the bottom this is the bottom plate and this is the cell plate okay let's say cell one second cell third cell okay let's say there is one area where we are evaluating and another one area where we are evaluating so the difference between this area and this area is this area is very near to the world okay and this area is away from the world so that's what it is saying when away from the world or joint at least the greater of one inch or twice the plate thickness if the plate thickness is less and it is the greater one is oh, the let's say the plate thickness is 0.25 inch so two times the plate thickness is how much 0.5 inch it is saying the greater the greater is one inch okay let's say it is away from the world joint it is four inch away from the world joint when this situation will come close your eyes and take e is equal to one is it clear or i have to tell one more time when the thickness two times the cell plate thickness or one inch whichever is greater if the uh, area of evolution is away from that distance then you have to take e is equal to one if it is less than that like this situation where it is close to the world joint then you have to find out the e how in table 4.2 i will tell you how to do this one okay is it clear similarly the height height test height okay how we will do that the height from the bottom of the cell course ht how we will do that by just 
uh, arranging the equation okay in that previous equation we are finding t minimum now we are finding ht okay if for the entire cell course it is plus 1 if not for the entire cell course and local thinned area then there is no plus 1 so this formula no need to remember usually this formula come in a open book question okay so at that time you just need to find out how you can find s and e s and e is different for t minimum and ht okay don't confuse ht with t so here st requirement is use the smaller of 0.88 y or 0.472 t y is l strength and t is the tensile strength and similarly use the smaller of 0.9 y or 0.59 for all other cell courses so always you have to find out where you are doing the uh, whether it is near to the world or whether it is in the entire cell course so as i told for the for finding the maximum allowable stress okay maximum allowable stress how we can find out you have to, th there must be the material grade is given okay whatever the grade find out the grade what is the grade of that material then it is written whether it is lower two courses or upper two courses or upper courses okay if there is a tank with uh, let's say uh, five courses the lower two courses value will be here and above lower two courses the values will be here okay so this is the way to find out this is the way to find out the allowable st cell stress and here there is another one is given if the material grade is not given in the question it is written that the material is unknown the material is unknown then for the lower the values is like that and for the above lower two cell course the value is like that okay so this is for the s then we have another one is called e efficiency as we told efficiency is one when if away from the world then we have to take it one how much away one inch or two times the cell thickness okay two times the cell thickness two times the cell thickness so two times the cell thickness or one inch whichever is greater you will take that one then the e is one let's say it is not it is near to the world then how to find out there is two things you have to find out whether it is as per APA 650 or APA 12C. APA 12C, which year it is manufactured? 57 to 58, 40 to 56, 36 to 39. Or 650, 61 to 78, or 1980 to present. When you find this one, then find out whether it is for NX as pot RT or basic standard. Then if it is bot 12, then find the value. Got it? All this information, what I say, is available in the question. Just have to read the question properly. Follow table 4.2 and find the value. Okay. If it is unknown, then for about 12, it is 0.7. Usually, sometimes they say uh, the, the standard is unknown. Okay. There is no standard. We don't know the standard. And it's about 12. So, how much it will be? It will be 0.7. So, now it is clear you will whatever the closed book ex, uh, open book exam will get for t minimum and ht, uh, ht you, now i believe you are able to do this one if you have any doubt put me in the comment i will answer that so as i told i i 4.3.2.2 i have left that one okay i have left at that place and i told a question will come must so what is that question widely scattered pits may be ignored provided that no pit depth the sum of the, the no pit depth result in the remaining cell thickness being less than one half of the minimum acceptable tank cell here it is very simple actually if you find the um, uh, 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 pit depth results let's say in a 8 inch area we found d1 d2 d3 okay then we have to add all these three d1 d2 <coughs> the sub <clears throat> the sum of the dimension alone, any vertical line does not exceed 2 inch and 8 inch length. It is a simple calculus only, calculation only. In the question, they will provide that pit measurements for 3 areas will be D1, blah, D1, D3 is just not. Whether it is allowed or not. Okay. Then what you have to do? You have to add all these things. And you have to see in a 8 inch length, whether it is exceeding 2 inch. If it is exceeding 2 inch, then it is not acceptable. Okay. 
The evaluation of existing tank cells shall be conducted by a storage tank engineer and shall include an analysis of the cell for the intended design conditions. So, it should be done by the tank engineer. Based on existing cell plate thickness and material, the analysis shall take into consideration all participated loading condition and combination including pressure due to fluid static head, internal and external pressures, wind load, seismic loads, roof life loads, nozzle loads, settlements and attachment loads. Cell corrosion occurs in many forms and varying degrees of severity and may result in a generally uniform loss of metal over a large surface area or in localized areas. It is possible. If the requirement of 4.3.3 that is welded and 4.3.4 riveted cannot be satisfied, the corroded or damaged area shall be repaired or the level liquid level of the tank reduced or the tank is retired. Okay. If in any case the cell which is we have evaluated that there is some defect scan. It is not uh, uh, repaired by welding or riveting. Then the tank can be retired, can be taken to consideration for the retirement. Minimum thickness calculation for the riveted tank cells. This is uh, open book questions usually come. What is the joint efficiency Okay, for the riveted tanks? Whatever we are considering last times, there are welded tanks. And here it is riveted tanks. Riveted tanks, there is two types, lap joint and ball joint. Lap joint means this is the tank, one plate, this is another one plate. So, we have to put the rivet here. Okay, so we are call it lap joint. And in ball joint, we have a plate here. We have another one plate here. And we have a patch plate on both of it. And we put Repeat on top of it. So we caught it, we caught it, we called it bot joints. So for lap joint and bot joints, how much the joint efficiency will be, we can find it in table 4.3. The minimum acceptable thickness for the riveted tank cells shall be calculated using the equation 4331. The same equation how we calculate. Okay. But here the S value is 21,000 foot pound per inch square and E is 1 inch for cell plate 6 inch or more away from the rivet. C table 4.3 joint efficiency for location within the 6 inch of the rivet and by this way we can find out the minimum thickness calculations. Distortion. Cell distortion include out of roundness, buckled area, flat, spot, dent and picking and bending at welded joints. If you didn't watch my APA 650, please go and watch those. On that area we have mentioned what are the tolerance level for picking and bending. What is the tolerance for the out of roundness? So all these things are there. So please do watch all this and get a note of that one because the picking bending, the out of roundness, the plumbness is different from a PA 650 and 653. Both are not same. Okay. So don't be confused. Cell distortions can be caused by many conditions such as foundation settlement, over or under pressure, high wind, poor cell fabrication or repair technique and so forth. Plus, flaws such as cracks or lamination shall be thoroughly examined and evaluated to determine their nature and extent and need for repair. If a repair is needed, a repair procedure shall be developed and implemented. Cell weights. So how to do the cell welding? Let's say we evaluate a cell, we found some thinning of materials and now we need to do the weld. So what are the procedure? How to do the welds? Cracks shall be removed. No way cracks are allowed. Removal area shall be evaluated and repaired if necessary. Excessive weld reinforcement does not require rework if the tank has satisfactory history of service. So excessive reinforcement is not a problem. Undercut or cell butt welds resulting from original construction shall not require repair if the tank has been hydro tested or will not undergo a change of service. Okay. Weld corrosion shall be repaired if the corrosion pit cavity bottom is below the surface of adjacent cell plates. So there are some minimum requirements which we have to find out during welding, the welding requirements for the cell plates weld. Okay. Cell penetrations. Existing weld of the tank cell cell uh, that are not to be modified or affected by repairs and are closer than the minimum required spacings. FEI 650 are acceptable for continued service if the welds are examined by the magnetic particle or SCFM alternating current field measurements method and have no rejectable defects or indications.
tank bottom evolution this is one of them. so we have completed roof cell and now it is tank bottom cause of bottom failures the following list gives some historical cause of tank bottom failures and failure that has shall be considered in the decision of line repair or replacement of tank bottom. Internal pitting and pitting rates in the anticipated service. Corrosion of weld joints. Weld joint cracking history. Stress placed on bottom plate by roof support loads and cell settlements. Undersized corrosions. These are some of the causes which is not so important. Cause we don't uh, have uh, more questions. These are few of the causes for which the bottom failure occurred. This is for your knowledge, so you can read those. Okay. So this is important. Tank bottom release prevention system and release prevention barrier. How we can put a barrier so that the real, the uh, tank bottom uh, leakage will not happen? And what are the systems we are using? Okay. So. AP support the use of release prevention systems to maintain the integrity of tank bottoms. The term RPS refers to, refers to the suit of APA standard and recommended practice that are designed to maintain tank integrity and thus protect the environment. With respect to tank bottom, this includes internal inspection of the tank bottom, leak detection system and leak testing of the tank, installation of cathodic protection and uh, undersize of the tank bottom. If you remember, I have uh, mentioned in APA 650 for the tank bottom, okay, this is the tank bottom, let's say, this is the bottom plates, sorry, this is the foundation, let's say this is the foundation. Beneath the bottom plate, they are putting some pipes, okay, in order to find out, perforated pipes, okay, in order to find out if there is any leak in the bottom plate, the water will come out from this one and we can find out and we can repair it. Uh, in order to avoid further damage. So this is one of the uh, protection system, tank bottom release uh, prevention system, okay? Preven prevention system. For barriers, what are the barriers we do? Cathodic protection, internal lining. Internal lining will read in APA 650, okay? Cathodic protection will read in APA 651. We will continue this one in APA 650 chapter only, we will read this one, cathodic protection. So these are some of the release prevention barriers. Okay. Bottom place thickness measurement. So we have to, there is only, but this, this is the formula for the uh, bottom place thickness measurement. This question usually never came in the exam. Okay. So here only there is two points you have to remember. Magnetic flux leakage and ultrasonic testing are the two tools to measure the, the bottom plate thickness measurement. And it is, uh, it is the most important part, bottom, bottom plate, as you know, bottom plate is the most important part, as uh, the cell plate of the pressure vessels. So, uh, a proper measurement with magnetic flux leakage tools are commonly used or with a UT thickness measurement. This is usually a closed book exam. If the minimum, minim, this is the requirement of bottom plate, okay, minimum bottom plate thickness for the next inspection, 0.1, 2.5 inch, 2.5 mm, okay. In APA 650, it is how much? 6 mm, okay. As for APA 650, the new construction of tank, the minimum bottom plate thickness would be 6 mm. And as for APA 653, it is 2.5 mm, okay. That you need to remember. So here there are some, some uh, um, bullet points they have mentioned. Unless a stress analysis is performed, the minimum bottom plate thickness in the critical zone of the tank, this is important. Critical zone, which I told, critical zone means, this, if, this is, if this is the tank, this is the bottom plate, okay, from the cell, 3 inch is the critical, in, critical uh, zone, okay. 3 inch from the cell plate is called critical zone. So critical zone of the tank bottom defined in 9112 shall be smaller of one half of the original bottom plate thickness, not including the original corrosion allowance or 50% of the T minimum of the lower cell cores. With the lower cell cores, T minimum how much? It's 50%, okay? Or one half of the original bottom plate thickness, it should reach for the critical zone, only for the critical zone. And th for the minimum bottom plate thickness at the end of service period are calculated to be less than the minimum bottom renewal thickness given in table 4.4. This is the minimum. 
minimum how much it is telling telling 2.5 mm okay tank bottom foundation design with no means to detection the contamination of the tank bottoms 0.45 inch if tank bottom foundation design with means to provide detection and contamination of a bottom leak okay so these are the requirements these two requirements will come in open book exam repair of internal pitting when performing to extend the in service period of the operation shall be pit welding overlay welding or lap patching followed by inspection and testing so this is annular bottom plate thickness table usually this table come is a open book that's why i put it here okay unless a stress analysis is performed that consider future corrosion until the time it can inspection repaired and replaced to the following criteria should be applied the thickness of the projection of the bottom plate beyond the cell as measured at the top outside bottom to plate less than point this is a open book question please remember this is open book questions okay for a tank in service with the product specific gravity less than 1 water specific gravity is 1 so it is lighter than water which require annular plate for other than seismic loading consideration the thickness of annular plate shall not be less than the thickness given in the table 4.5 this is table 4.5 that's why i told sometimes it will ask for closed book exam okay sorry open book exam tank foundation evolution so we have read about the cell which most of the question will come roof and bottom roof and bottom there are few open book questions okay now we'll come for the tank foundation so the tank foundation the principal cause of foundation deterioration are settlement you know that one erosion cracking and deterioration of concrete initiated by calcining attack by underground calcining is a question okay the this is the definition you will find a closed book question for this one attack by underground water attack by frost and attack by alkalis and acids to ensure suitability of the surface all tank foundation shall be inspected periodically calcining loss of water or hydration can occur when concrete has been exposed to sufficiently high temperature usually what happen when the concrete pouring is done it should be under wet condition so that the water which concrete will concrete has should not evaporate easily okay more the water more the days with the water you put it the higher the strength will be okay so this is called calcining so loss of water or hydration this is a question will come okay and it can occur when concrete has been exposed to sufficiently high temperature for a period of time deterioration of concrete exposed to underground water can be caused by chemical attack by cyclic change in temperature and by freezing moisture expansion of freezing moisture is porous concrete or in concrete with minor settlement cracks or temperature cracks can result in spalling and or the development of uh, serious structure cracks sulfate type alkalis and to a lesser extent chlorides can act corrosively to destroy the bond of the concrete temperature cracks do not seriously uh, affect the strength of the concrete foundation structures however this is they usually say hairline crack or uniform width okay if there is a hairline crack then there is no problem as long as the crack is not big if it is big then it can be make a problem foundation repair repair and replacement if there is a need for foundation replacement and reinstallation the new foundation evaluation profile must meet the tolerance in 10.5.6 alternatively if the new foundation is to construct up to the bottom changing the levelness of the tank is not required if reviewed and approved by a storage tank engineer this is a close book question storage tank engineer considering the plumbness of the cell presence and absence of the cell distortion and original construction levelness which warrant the leaving of tank at the current state of levelness okay there are some requirements for the anchor bolts and concrete packs rain wells fire swing evidence of spalling and structural cracks and uh, general deterioration shall be repaired this is not so important so as i told you will get 12 to 15 questions out of 12 to 15 questions only calculation you will get 5 to 6 questions the rest of the questions are few from the few of the tables okay and few of the explanations okay so chapter 4 is very important you have to read it what is the requirement for roof cell bottom and the foundation so these four topics usually we read it today for uh, 
APA 653. Many thanks, friend. Hope you like this video. Please do share with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and make comment if in any area you have any doubt. Thanks for your support and time. Have a good day.